Thank you for tuning into the Parkside Parent Podcast. I'm Robbie Lacey, the middle school pastor here at Parkside, and it is our mission in students and children's ministries to support families as we help unbelieving students become committed followers of Jesus Christ. Today on the podcast, we're so excited to have on Christopher Ash to join us. Uh, Christopher is a writer in residence at Tyndale House, Cambridge, and a former pastor and director of the Cornhill Training Course in London. He's written many books, including Married for God, which is a book that we'll be referencing in the conversation. If you would like to know more about Married for God, we'll have more information in the show notes below. Uh, Christopher is here today with us to help us to answer the question, how do we keep God at the center of our parenting? Well, Christopher, thank you so much for joining us on the Parkside Parent Podcast. Um, Many of you will know Christopher. Um, He has been uh, a blessing to our church uh, at Parkside uh, in many different ways. He's been a blessing to me and the team uh, through the books that he's written uh, that have been helpful about preaching and commentaries, uh, books about marriage that have been helpful, one that we'll talk about today. Um, He's been a blessing to Parkside when he's come to preach uh, on Sundays and at our basics conference. And uh, he's also been a blessing to many of the guys on our team just in uh, uh, the sweetness of friendship with them. So uh, Christopher, it's great to have you. Welcome to the Parkside Parent Podcast. Thank you very much. It's a joy for me. Carolyn and I have very, very happy memories of our visits to Parkside, and we'd love to come again if uh, the uh, pandemic allows. Well, I'm sure we will have you back as soon as possible once things get back uh, to normal a little bit. Um, this is a podcast for parents at Parkside, and so it's it's good to know that you, you are a parent uh, and uh, a grandparent, actually. So could you just give a brief overview of uh, your family, kids, grandkids? Very gladly, yes. We've been entrusted with Uh, three sons and a daughter. Uh, They're all grown up now. They're all in their late 20s or 30s. And uh, three of them are married. And uh, we have seven grandchildren. And God willing, we shall have an eighth in May, you know, all all being well. So it's it's a rich family experience, lots of joy. Wonderful. Well, that's a big blessing. And uh, I'm I'm confident that uh, your experience as a parent and a and a grandparent will hopefully uh, get some of God's wisdom will be able to come out through that and uh, the things that you'll have to share with us today. Uh, one of the reasons that I was eager to have you join us on the podcast is because of how much I personally have been challenged uh, by your book on marriage called Married for God. Um, I've read it for myself. I've talked about it with my wife and um, have shared a lot of the themes and ideas from that book with fellow parents, uh, fellow uh, married people. And uh, one of the big themes in your book is that our marriages and our families are not ultimately about us, but they're actually designed to be all about God. And so in our marriages, when we live with a focus on God, uh, that's when actually our marriages operate the best. And I think that the same applies for the way that we parent and the way that we lead our families. Uh, you You wrote this in your book. Surprisingly, the key to a good marriage is not to pursue a good marriage, but to pursue the honor of God. Can you expound on that idea for us and maybe tell us how that idea might relate to how we parent our kids and lead our families? Yes, certainly. I, in the book on marriage, it was mostly derived from Genesis uh, chapter two, where the man is given the woman to be his helper and together they're to work and serve. So it's an outward looking thing uh, to, to serve God and honor God in his world. I'm quite sure that carries through into parenting when God entrusts us with children. The world thinks children are for our benefit. And it makes all the difference in the world when we think God has entrusted us with these children. And uh, we are to parent as best we can by his grace uh, for his honor rather than for our pleasure. Sometimes it is for our pleasure, of course, but um, that's not the purpose. And if it isn't for our pleasure, well, we still do it. Yeah. In I've I've found in in many good ways, you know, in in my own marriage, uh 
I love my wife deeply and I care about my kids a lot. And there's this, uh, this natural gravitational pull towards really focusing on them in many good ways. Um, but I think also we can find here that that can, um, in, in all the ways that idolatry is essentially taking a good thing and making it an ultimate thing, um, I, I find the tendency in myself and in my family, I know my wife does too, um, to do that as well. So um, how do we change our, I, I love that the way that you think of, uh, the way that you say outward looking. I think there's a place in the book too where you say our, our marriages have to be, it's like we're looking out of a window out to something that's beyond us and greater than us. How do we get that perspective as parents um, and, how, and how do we how do we get to making that a, a normal, regular part of how we view our spouses and our families? I think that's a really good question because unless we're shaped by the word of God, we'll simply be shaped either by the culture of our society or possibly by the culture of a church. And a culture of a church, if it's a church like Parkside, will be a good culture. But to be shaped simply by the culture of people around us uh, is always going to decenter God. And so I think the, the, the key thing is to keep God at the center of our own hearts and lives so that we're bowing down before the Father in the name of the Son, in the power of the Spirit, all that we do. So it's not that we suddenly think, ah, for my parenting, I'm going to put God at the center. It's that God is needs to be at the center of all that we do. Uh, so I think that that we, we we all default to parenting the way we've seen it done hmm. by our parents for good or sometimes for less good, depends on our, how where we were raised and how we were raised. But we we tend just to default to that, and. Having God at the centre is always going to put the, the God question and the honour of God in at the heart of what we're deciding to do in the small things as well as the big things. And so it's an attitudinal thing. I think it, I mean, I think it carries over with our, our natural instinct is to want our children to look good. Mm -hmm. We want other people to look at our kids as we're raising them and think what good parents they are. <laughs> we, you know, we, we just want to bring that out into the open and think that's, that's what we naturally want. So when people see us with our kids, um, whether, whether it's out on the sidewalk, whether it's in the shopping mall, whether it's in church, we want people to think, oh, what, what, what lovely, well-behaved kids. And it's natural that we should want that. But to have God at the centre is going to make us pray and work for the heart of our children, hmm. because it's possible. And I mean, I know that in a culture that's d deeply impacted by Christian faith and parts of the culture uh, uh, around Parkside are like that, some, some are, um, it's easy for children just to conform. Mm -hmm. I just think this is... You know, you get this in some other countries. We've lost it in the United Kingdom long since now. But you, you get that sense that the kids look right and they know how to talk the talk. So their youth leaders or their children's leaders say how wonderful they are. And they just need to get a little bit more savvy about human sin and to think actually what's going on in their hearts may not be the same as what they look like. So I think that's a that's a key uh, a key thing with 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 this, but th this question of how do you react when your kids are rude or badly behaved or rebellious? I was talking this over with Carolyn uh, just yesterday, actually thinking about this, and she was saying, "How do you react when they behave all wrong?" And the natural thing is to think, I, I feel ashamed that they're behaving all wrong. I feel it might reflect badly on me. Hmm. 
And I, I think the challenge sometimes is to have a, a home which is infused with grace mm. at its heart. So our, our kids see us living under grace. They see us as sinners needing to be forgiven, mm. see us asking for forgiveness. And, and they grasp that that's the Christian life. It's not a self-righteous um, thing or, a, or a, a superficial, hypocritical conformity with, with outward appearance. And you get a, you, I mean, it, no, not all our children are following the Lord. We long that they will. We're deeply conscious of um, failures in our parenting, and we long for them all to follow the, the the Lord, but to realize that that's something only God can do, and to pray that He will do that work in their hearts, uh, is a really key thing. I I don't know, I mean we have visited Parkside, so I know a little bit about you you guys, but where I live in Cambridge, there are all sorts of idols that Perry you mentioned idolatry just now that that particularly because we're a a famous university city, um, education is a huge idol, mm. and and sometimes you you know you think I want my kids to do well at exams, I want them to do well in school, I want them to do well in college, and of course you do. We all want them to do well in all sorts of things. It's great when our kids do well, but actually we should care much much less about that than whether their hearts are gripped by Jesus. Hmm. That's so insightful and that's so helpful. And you know, you, you say how things are at Parkside. I think in so many ways it's very similar. And I, I have so many conversations because I'm the youth pastor here. I talk to a lot of the families. So that intersection of parenting and also my interactions with middle schoolers and high schoolers, I think one of the, in, in all the ways that you're speaking to, it's so easy to tend towards moralism and just fixing and adjusting behavior because that's something visible that we can measure as success. We can say, my kid has these grades. My kid has gotten, in, you know, has stayed out of trouble all through these four years of school. And it's this, it, it's tempting to, we want our kids to be good kids and we want a way to measure it that's visible. Um, but what you're getting to here is ultimately, if we're going to be married for God and if we're going to be parenting for God, our desire and our goal is not for our kids to just be well behaved or to live up to some certain cultural standard. But ultimately, the only thing that we should really care about at the end of the day more than anything else is that they know, serve and love Jesus Christ. And that is an issue that comes to what's at the very bottom of their heart. And that's the thing that we can't control and that we can't manipulate. Um, but necessarily, in, in a gracious way, that's something that we have to completely give over to God and trust to him that he will change our kids' hearts. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's right. I, and I, one of the things we struggled with, it's hard bringing up a young family. One of the things we struggled with was discipline because Carolyn, my wife and I, we would often disagree about it. One of us, I would usually want to be stricter. She would want to be less strict. Uh, and it was sometimes really painful to disagree right. about that and to know how and we didn't disagree publicly in front of the children, but we did disagree. And it was really hard to try to work that through. I'm not sure we always did very well, but to do that as it were, on your knees before God and, and, and praying that we would work together in a godly, Jesus-honoring way. I think a lot of parents find that a challenge. We certainly did. Yeah. Well, as challenging as that might be, I, I think at least I found this to be the case, that there's been nothing that's made that's forced me to pray more than being a parent. There's nothing that has made me realize that I'm uh, not in control as much as I'd like to be as when I've um, been a parent. And my, my kids are still small. So I, it, it, I, 
I can see the way in all the, the families that we have at Parkside, the way that as kids grow up and as they get older, you get this sense more and more, uh, a right sense that we aren't in control, um, that God's given us um, this role uh, as a leader and authority in our family. But ultimately, uh, the thing that we want most, our kids coming to faith, God uses us, but ultimately he's the one you know, who's in control. Yes, I think that's right. They, they pick up our values, mm -hmm. they pick up what we really care about because they see us. They see us when we're tired and under pressure. Mm -hmm. And they pick up yeah. uh, what really matters to us, what gets us out of bed in the morning, what we care about. They pick up the things that they do or say that really please us, mm -hmm. that really displease us. Uh, they, they pick up whether we're more pleased with high SATs results or whatever it is than we are with them being honest and loving Jesus. Um, they pick that kind of thing up because they're, very, they're not stupid. Yeah. And that's why you and I and every parent listening to this podcast has to prioritize our own personal relationship with Jesus because all of that stuff that's going on in our heart is ultimately bubbling over for our kids to see who have a front row seat on what's going on in our hearts and how it's um, the fruit that's being born out of that in our lives and the way that we parent. And so um, we can only lead our kids well uh, if we ourselves are following Jesus well. And I think everything that you've said just speaks to that um, and is so very insightful and helpful. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for this conversation. I think uh, that this I will certainly uh, serve our parents well. And uh, your book, Married to God, we, we're going to link to it in the show notes because I often recommend it to parents and to spouses. And I, I think it will be a helpful resource to them. So, Christopher, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll have you on later this season with uh, another episode where we'll uh, talk through another question. Thanks, Danny. Thank you for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And please check out the show notes below for more resources regarding what we covered today, including Christopher Ash's book, Married for God. And please tune in next week when we have on Fieldstone counselor, Sarah Keenan, to answer the question, how do I help my kids navigate stress from school?